All right, in this quick video, I want to show you how to create, um, how to save something from the canvas to a PNG file. So we're going to create a very, very tiny drawing application using CodePen. And then we're going to take the output of whatever we draw and then save that as a PNG file. And I'll show you how that works. So the first thing that we need in our HTML part is a canvas. So we're going to write a canvas tag, we'll give it a name, we'll give it a width and height, um, and that's it. And then also what we need is we're going to need um, a button and that button is going to be our save button. So we're going to write save here and that's going to be our button. Now we don't really see the canvas so in CSS we're just going to give that canvas a small border um, and that allows us to see actually that canvas here. Cool. So now uh, we don't we can't actually draw anything, we have to do that in JavaScript. So we're basically done with these parts. We're going to widen this up a little bit. And then in JavaScript, what we're going to do is first get a reference to our canvas. I use a G here uh, to indicate that this is a global variable and that's available to our entire script. Um, and we're going to select a, the canvas with the ID of C. And then immediately once we selected it, we can also uh, get at access to the context is using get context 2 d and that allows us to draw something so here I can do fill rect um, something like this and that allows me to draw something on the canvas it actually helps if we open up the console here uh, we can see if there's something going on if we write an error or anything right but we don't want this to draw always we want to draw it whenever we move the mouse so to do that we're going to add a listener to the canvas we're going to listen to a mouse down event and the key here is to only listen to mouse down events not to the other events because we want uh, the other events to apply to the window and I'll show you in a minute why we do that so we have to write that function so write on mouse down uh, that takes in an event and the first thing that we are going to do is prevent the default behavior whatever that is so that allows us to uh, for example not accidentally select things on the page or something like that and then next what we're going to do is add an event listener for mouse move events. So when the mouse is down, then we start listening for mouse move events uh, using an on mouse move listener. And we do exactly the same. Oh, let me do that again. We do exactly the same with a mouse up listener. So this one is a mouse up. And here we also listen for mouse up events. And note that these are not applied to the canvas, but they're applied to the window. And the reason why is that you can sometimes go out of bounds when you draw and you don't want the events to stop them. You just want to keep on uh, drawing. So with on mouse move, this is where the actual drawing happens. So first we also prevent the default behavior and then we are going to draw something. Now, um, the easiest thing we can do is just use uh, context fill rect, which is the one that we did before. And then we're going to draw at the offset of whatever our um, uh, mouse position is uh, offset X offset Y and then draw uh, let's say 8 by 8 pixels and then we do a mouse move because otherwise it complains here so oh, sorry a mouse up event so prevent default and what we're going to do here is just copy and paste these two lines and then instead of saying add event listener we're going to say remove event listener so we're no longer listening to uh, events here uh, don't worry about formatting just do format JavaScript here Whoop. Like that right and now we can actually draw um, you see that the mouse move event doesn't really work and that's because I wrote a mistake here that resets okay now I can draw and it stops now that we have these pixels here they're also not really at on the middle so we have to do offset at X minus 4 offset Y minus 4 to actually draw them exactly in the center of our mouse position right and now it gets let's get rid of this rectangle and that's our drawing application right so now we can draw something on that screen cool and now for the saving so we want to listen to events that happen on the button so the save button with the hashtag save we are listening for a click and when we press click we are going to call the on save function which we don't have yet so we're going to write that on save function um, and this is the crucial one. This is the one that also took me a while. Um, the trick is to convert the canvas object to a blob. That's this one. And then to have that blob, basically to take all the whole blob and convert that to a PNG file and then 
save that, allow the browser to download that in some way. And I'll show you that step by step. So the first thing we have to do is basically take that canvas and call to blob. And that converts it to a blob. Now, it doesn't return anything. Instead, it takes a callback, which means that this first parameter here is actually a function that we have to call, like blob, um, uh, like this. So here we have access to that blob. And let's log out that blob so you can see what that actually looks like. Um, right, so we can draw, we can press save, and now it says blob. That doesn't say very much, right? Uh, inside of that blob, there's an, uh, what's called an array buffer. So there's actually data inside there. Um, and we can log that out. Doesn't really matter that we haven't drawn anything. It's just, um, it's just uh, a blank canvas will also give us data here, right? So we save, that's going to give us a promise. <laughs> Uh, we can wait for that and then basically we want to see what that um, thing is going to look like and we can't actually wait for that so we're just going to ignore it but it's basically a long string of um, of text or numbers uh, that actually represents the data in a PNG format and what we want to do with that data is basically convert that to a URL and then take that URL and then save that as a file and um, the way that's going to look is to this function create object URL it's going to convert that to a blob and I think we can actually print this one out so let's log that one um, again press save and now it says blob blah 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 with this uh, thing here so it's converted it to a blob and if we download this blob this is actually a PNG file that we can have uh, get back and that's what we want right so let's do that how do we do that well it's kind of weird. The first thing we have to do is uh, create an element, a link element on the page. So create element A, that's going to create a link. And then we append that link to the page, otherwise it doesn't work. We can use append or append child. Um, and then here, the uh, href, so this one is the href. So that's the link, that's the thing that we actually click on, right? And then we immediately pretend that we click on it by calling a.click so it looks like we're clicking on that link and then finally because we don't actually care about the link we just remove it from the page now, there's one more thing that we have to do is we have to specify a download attribute that allows us to when we click on the link we can actually um, get a, a file there we can download that file we can give that a name so I can just call export uh, like this like uh, oops sorry export not PNG but uh, because we want to have multiple ones, I'm just going to add a timestamp here. So I'm going to add when that file is downloaded. And the easiest thing is here to just take a timestamp, uh, take the current date, convert that to a string. And that's going to give us a long range of numbers, but it's unique enough. Uh, we're going to append that using string templating. I'm going to add that here. And that's going to give the name of the file. And I think we're done. So now if we uh, draw something on our page, whoop, whoop, we click save. Now it says, it says export that file. And now, as you can see, we export that file. Uh, so that's it. That's all we had to do. This part is kind of tricky because it's sort of a completely weird way of using links and things like that. Um, but apart from that, the rest is a pretty standard um, way. I hope that helps um, to show you how you can convert your files, uh, convert your canvas to an actual PNG.